Barry Tompkins with Al Bernstein. We welcome you back to Harris here in Atlantic City. I correct myself. Of course I know it's the IBF lightweight championship and not welterweight championship. Freddie Pendleton and Tracy Spann, two of the best the division has to offer. It will be an outstanding fight. Here's Al with a look. The term champion means something to Freddie Pendleton and to his opponent, Tracy Spann. It's been a long time coming and once delayed. On August 29th of 1992, Pendleton and Spann were ready to put months of training to work as they met for the vacant IBF lightweight title. Early in about, it looked like a wild affair. Only to have it end here in the second round. It was a technical draw due to this unintentional headbutt. And as the blood came down the face of Freddie Pendleton, it put on hold the dreams of both men. The dreams of holding a world championship. The rematch was set immediately, and both fighters were ready again to prove which one would be worthy to wear the IBF lightweight belt. Pelton and Span have had different paths to get to this destination. Freddie's career has had plenty of ups and downs. A lot of early losses, but his first win came here in 1986 when he shocked Roger Mayweather and knocked him out in the sixth round. It was a huge upset at the time, and Freddie knew he had gotten somewhere. No way, it's an upset. Pendleton is going nuts. In 1988, Freddie faced contender Sammy Fuentes. He was supposed to be tough. Uh-uh. It was a TKO in the first round for Pendleton. Later that year, Freddie went on to win the USBA crown in a 10-round TKO win over Razai Bramble, a former world champion. Tracy's career followed a more traditional route, winning bouts continuously. And by 1989, he'd won the IBF Intercontinental title from Brian Payton with this shocking fourth round TKO. The next year, he would get a big win over Idlemar Paisan in a 10-round unanimous decision win that proved he could go the distance. In May of that year, he went on to defend his Intercontinental title when he knocked off Bernard Gray in the sixth round. By February of 1990, Freddie faced his toughest opponent yet, the reigning world champion, Cornell Whitaker. He held on for 12 rounds and had his moments, but lost the decision. Surviving an up and down career would discourage many, but not Freddie. He has looked forward to what gave him the power to keep on going, even through the bad times. Believing in God and knowing that it's, uh, you know, whatever you can, whatever you want to do, you can accomplish. If you put yourself, if you apply yourself, you can, you know, become champion of the world if necessary. And um, if that, that's what I really wanted to do. And I uh, applied myself and worked hard and and now I'm getting a shot at, you know, actually accomplishing that goal. Both fighters are getting a second chance, and this bout will decide who learned enough in the last one to take home the crown. I've worked hard. I know what to expect now that I've been in there. I was down in the first round uh, from carelessness, and now, you know, I'll, I'll be more serious in this fight. The fight didn't end the way either one had planned, but now they have the chance to do it again, and this time to rewrite the ending the way they want. We're not completed. The bout is declared a technical draw. Certainly, I learned. Uh, I learned a lot that fight because um, I see how he was going to come, how he was going to fight me. So I got an idea about going into this second fight with, with Freddie that uh, I know what to expect from him. So I'm looking forward to fighting him this time. Definitely. I'm in good shape. And, um, I'm ready to go. And there's a look at Tracy Spann, and he does look very ready for this fight. He has not fought since that technical draw against Freddie Pendleton last August, and he feels he is ready to go. On the other side of the ring, glaring <laughs> Freddie Pendleton. I told him I should be given Diana Ross's dressing room. <laughs> All right, Al, let's uh, really get down to business in this one and talk about the AutoZone keys to victory. 
For Tracy Spann, he needs to sustain his effort. He's a very quick starter, but uh, he may have to sustain it for a while in this spot if he doesn't get Pendleton out early. Don't ignore the body. Important for him to slow Pendleton down. Freddie needs to counterpunch very effectively. And later is better for him. I think the later the fight goes, the better it is for Pendleton, even if he is to score a knockout. Really looking forward to this fight. Let's talk about the rules, the IBF rules, of course. A couple of differences. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight, which you saw in the other bouts, and pretty much the rest remains the same. All right, the winner will be the champion, and the loser can only contemplate what he did wrong. Let's meet him with Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace. Representing the International Boxing Federation as supervisor ringside, Robert W. Lee Jr. The three judges assigned to score this battle in a 10-point must system, Rick Bays, Gene Williams, and Gary Merritt. Chief physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending physicians, Dr. Dominic Coletta Jr. and Dr. Stanley Eden. The timekeeper is Errol Curry, and counting for the knockdown seconds will be Errol Morton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Harris, Atlantic City, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF lightweight championship of the world. The referee for this contest, Randy Newman. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the gold trunks with spangled trim, weighing in at 135 pounds. He's originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, now fighting out of Miami, Florida. His professional record, 32 victories with 22 KOs, seven de 17 defeats and four draws. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number one in the world in the lightweight division, fearless Freddie Pendleton. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with black and red trim, weighing an even 135 pounds also, and fighting out of Plainfield, New Jersey. His professional record, 27 victories, only one defeat, one draw, 24 of those 27 victories by KO, ranked number two in the world, ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Slam Bam Bam! Gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules that they've been gone over. I want you to remember two things. Number one, defend yourselves at all times. You obey my commands. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. And there is a look at Freddie Pendleton. As he mentioned, he was literally a late bloomer. He had a couple of years that he suffered through that for any fighter just were not very pretty. We'll talk more about that. And Tracy Spann, on the other hand, with only the one loss to Jorge Paez to mar an otherwise perfect record. That, of course, along with the technical draw in the last fight against Freddie Pendleton. <laughs> Pendleton was down early to Spann, said, I'm not going to do that this time. In fact, on his trunks, on the sides of his trunks, it says, less fear. <laughs> and, you know, it's not that Freddie Pendleton is afraid of anybody. It's just that he's, he, he, you know, he almost felt like a little concentration was lacking. Here are the knockout percentages. As you can see, Span obviously would be greater of the two. Span is a guy who can get you out of there with one punch. Uh, great power. We've seen it beforehand. He has been a show that went you over know, Brian Cable, which at the time was uh, really vaulted uh, him higher up in the standings. It's interesting that whenever you and I get a fighter who has a record that is less than sterling, a guy who's 12 and 9 or 13, 10, that kind of record. You always point to Freddie Pentland and say, this can be done. Don't rule this guy out. Absolutely, because a lot of early losses can uh, make a fighter's record not look great. But in Pendleton's case, as you see him boxing well earlier against Spann, he got it together. And since he has gotten it together, his record has been excellent. Spann wants to cut the ring off on him, but has not... Uh, been able to do it quite as effectively as he'd like here in round one, and it is a big ring, boy. Serves Pendleton well. Look at that move by Pendleton. That is his whole game plan. Throw a right, or maybe a jab, then step to his left, and use his hands to push Stan away from him. And that, that means if he's moving his left, Stan can do almost nothing to him. 
You're going to see that move repeatedly. There it is, again. You'll see it over and over again from Pendleton. It's the way that he can survive in this fight and still score his punches. Span, of course, would prefer to have a brawl. That's a little warning from Randy Newman, I think, for holding on the break. He walks into the left hand by Pendleton. Hey. A lot of holding on the inside by Freddie Pendleton. Of course, part of it is they're worried about the head of Span. They, though that that clash of heads before was clearly accidental, they feel like Span comes in with his head down and, and, and makes uh, uh, the possibility of a cut more likely. I think that's a valid point. He does have a tendency to do that. Yeah. Good left hand, that's Stagger Pendleton. Well, Pendleton holds on, he is in trouble. Deja vu all over again, huh? And he best get on his bike for the rest of this round. Bell can't save you, remember. Another left hand, just a little short with that, and the first round is over. And Stan finishes it with a flourish. In a round in which this man, Freddie Pendleton, might still have won the round. But boy, he was rocked at the end of this round, wasn't he? Fight down. Boy, in microcosm, that is the fight. Yes, that's exactly. Let's listen to Tommy Brooks. That's a beautiful boxing. That's how you got to box, just like that, okay? Take your time, boxing just like you box. I got visually on my arm for you. I need more than one side at a time, though, okay? You don't, don't, just don't stick that jab. Put some authority on that jab, okay? But your boxing's beautiful, okay? Keep your hands up when you're pulling out now, all right? Now, here is where, after all that beautiful, beautiful boxing, he got hit. And why did he get hit? Because he was standing right in the way of that left. In other words, instead of moving to his left, look where he, he stayed there. Instead of coming to his left as he had throughout most of the round. And he got rocked by Tracy Spann. But excellent corner work by Tommy Brooks. Accentuating what he did right and saying, but keep your hands up when you're backing away like that. And he might have added also, make sure you move to the left, which of course he's doing. Had to be a confidence builder for Tracy Spann, however. Yeah, because after being outboxed kind of badly in that, most of that first round, he, uh, he heard it. But Spann still has to stay to a game plan here. I don't want to get careless. And the reason is because Freddie Pendleton has some pop in his punches. Now, Spann is using his arms to keep Pendleton there. In other words, he's going to literally push him to keep him in front of him. The other thing you have to say about this fight is two excellent corners. Very good work by both both corners. Johnny Pearsall, former light heavyweight contender in the corner of Tracy Spann. And Tommy Brooks, who we saw there, was a fine amateur light heavyweight. Al Benani also in Pendleton's corner. There was a left hand. It was a little long with that, actually. Pendleton is staying there for that left to hit him. He's yeah, fighting right. a different fight, Jerry than he was in the first two and a half minutes of this round. Uh, one thing he absolutely cannot do is brawl with Span, and, and so far, that's what he's doing. Not too many people can. Oh, here, Ty, break it up, break it up. Get And what Tommy Brooks said to Freddie Pendleton was, I need more than one punch at a time. If the oh, there, see, there's a good solid counter right by Pendleton. by Stan. See, look how he stepped to his right and pushed Pendleton in a position where he could punch him. There's a lot of subtle strategy going on in this box. This is not just an exciting match. It's a thinking man's boxing match. Good right hand by Pendleton. And then he steps to the left to tie up Stan. Yeah, this is clearly two guys who went into this fight with a plan. They both know what will work for them. And it, it, it's a question of one imposing the will on the other. Really, it's very much like a football game where the first two or three minutes you're trying to establish what you can do offensively and defensively. Nice shots by Pendleton. Stan trying to work the body, that went a little low. Oh, big right by Pendleton. I might have hurt Span. Yes, I think it did. I don't even know if that's good for Pendleton to be in there doing that, but he did hurt Span with the right hand. He better not get too brave, though, Pendleton. Oh, 
penalty right at the moment is quicker than span. The hand speed is important. You know, it's a misnomer to think the only guy in there with a the punch is crazy span. So they come to the end of the second round, a considerably better round for Pendleton, and that's not to say that he didn't have a good round in the first round. Look how Tracy Spann comes in and how close their heads come to clashing again. Remember their first fight, an accidental clash of heads caused a technical draw because of a cut to Pendleton's eye. Almost exactly like that replay that you just saw. Also a low punch there. So this is the third round, man. Spann's corner, as you take a look at the numbers... Wow, I can't believe it. That's amazing. That is hard Very seldom does it surprise you to look at the numbers. I thought Pennington had a much better round. But of course, Spann did a lot of body work, and some of that's reflected there. They were telling Spann to be a little bit more compact with his punches. Don't be as broad with his punches. All right, let's get out of there. Put him up, put him up. Tracy Spann lunges a lot. He throws some of his punches in an awkward way. But because he is simply flat out a puncher, a lot of that doesn't really matter too much with him. It adds, though, to his uh, defensive problems, though, and oftentimes uh, helps him get hit a lot more. Both men are 29 years old and both know that this is an opportunity not to be missed. Right hand to the top of the head by Span. Got Pendleton's attention, also got him out of there. Freddie Pendleton, I don't believe, is moving there. There's the move. Move to the left. Push off and move to the left. He's not doing that as much as he was in the first round. Another good right hand by Spann. It was a counter right. After a hook by Pendleton, you're right. And it's, Pendleton is much more in there where he can be hit by Spann. And uppercut, yeah, by Pendleton. starting to find a home for that right hand. And I think he is really hurting Spann. But that's what Spann needs to do. Push him back, turn this into a brawl, and rip the shots to the body in the head. Yeah, that's the point that you made earlier, which I really think is well taken, is you don't want Pendleton or Pendleton, I'm sure, doesn't want to get too brave. But when he has a little bit of success, hard not to. Bad yeah. hand by Spann. They have both landed bombs, and now Pendleton really landed that right hand, looking for it now. Well, I didn't think this fight was going to a decision. I still don't. They are both landing huge punches. And even though Pendleton is getting caught on the ropes more, he is still doing pretty well in this different posture against fans. You know what's nice about this spot? You know these men really came to win this spot in this title. They're just, they're not going to leave anything. Uh, they left nothing at home and they won't leave anything here. They'll, when they get out of this ring, you know they gave you every effort they could. A left hand by Span. Didn't seem to hurt Pendleton, however. And they growl at each other. I mean, literally I growl at each other. They stared yeah. at each other and went, Rawr. That's where supposed to be. All this body here. Johnny Crisol. That's what I want, kid. You're looking for up top. What about all that? All that didn't go up itself. Get down in the hole. Come on, let's go to work, huh? You're standing up. And you're waiting for something for no reason at all. He's right there. Hold that up and let's go to work. Excellent, excellent quarter work breath. again. Reminding Tracy Spann of what got him here and what he's supposed to get down to the hole, work the body, and then come up to the head. Let's go and get it then. You're too wide. You're right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go and get it. Here's the left hand from Spann. Now that one got there, but Freddie Pennell says, nah, I don't think so. There's the lock going. And you know what? You think these guys don't respect each other with the annex, but they do. That's true. Start of the fourth round. Very, very close fight. Stan only threw eight jabs in round three. He's not known for his jab. Pendleton with the edge in round three. Oh 
Johnny Purcell is with us right now. And uh, Johnny, you want your man to be a little bit more compact with his punches and yes, work downstairs? Do. Yes, I do. I want to get a little closer to give him a little, little, bit, little bit too much room. I would like for him to sit down a little bit and work inside a little more. But he got to close the gap to just between him and Pennington. And once he do that and let his hands go, get a different fight altogether. And work the body a little bit more, correct? I mean, we'd work the body a little bit more also, yes, you call them. Yes, yes. Now, when we get a little closer, we'll get right inside. Put okay. him up inside. He, looking, he puts a little too wide. I'm showing him up a little bit. Inside. Generally speaking, though, Johnny, you're satisfied with what you've seen so far? Not directly. That's an honest answer. Johnny, thanks for taking the time. Thank good you. work in there. And, th and that's another characteristic. Oh, Stan getting there with some good shots. That's another characteristic of Johnny Pearsall, honestly. Yeah, that's true. He and Tommy Brooks in the other corner have that in common among many other things. There's the move by Pendleton when he can execute it. Punch, 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 push off, go to the left. When he can execute that, he's in good shape. When he stands in front of Tracy Span, he has problems. Although he has landed his share of big shots. Right now, Pendleton looks like he wants to counter Span. Yeah, he wants very badly to counter with the straight right again that he hurt him with, but Spain's not allowing him to do that. Right hand by Span, but Pendleton is rolling with it. IBF title vacated by Cornell Whitaker when he moved up, and he tried to fill it once before these two men, but the technical draw because of the cut made that impossible, and... Uh, they're hoping somebody's going to walk out of here with that championship tonight. There's the right, and a good one. But is Freddie Pendleton being a little too cautious in this round? And he has not thrown that many punches, and it probably has let Span take this round. Was well, counter shots by Pendleton that really are strong, but Stan walking right through him. You can hear Johnny Persaw, perhaps. I can hear him in my ear, so I assume you can. And that is, work the body, work the body, which is exactly what he told in between rounds. We'll be back. So we are back and set to go to round five now, and it's an anybody's guest fight. Thought it was interesting. And Tommy Brooks in the corner of Pennell and saying, don't let the crowd influence you any way. In other words, don't do something that could be interpreted as careless. And he reiterated many times, when you back out, keep your hands down. Or keep them up, I'm sorry, not down. Don't keep your hands down, keep them up. Take a look at the numbers in the fourth round. And Span, who, as you mentioned, about 13 more, but didn't land that many. No, he, although he did land a few more, and that, in my mind, got him the round, but uh, he was not that effective with his punches. And Pendleton, with the last rally in the last minute, came back. Barry Tompkins, Al Bernstein. We are at Harris in Atlantic City. We're watching the IBF Lightweight Championship. Tracy Spann in the white trunks, Freddie Pendleton in the spangled trunks, and a very close fight. Hard to pick a winner right now. Well, as, as it was before the match, take a look at my card. I've come up to the winning, but boy, he's getting black now. He, he, he got hurt with the left hand. He might have gotten thumbed in the right eye. I Let's think see. he did. I don't think he can see right now out of that eye, and he's probably going to get on his bike, and Spann, of course, is going to just chase him. This is where the speed of Pendleton and the size of the ring could benefit him a little bit. And he'll, boy, he'll hold on for dear life. And you see the right eye squinting out of it. He's still having a little bit of trouble with it. He's just trying to stay out of harm's way. You can see now, the, I think the eye's clearing up a little bit, so Freddie is starting to stop for a moment to see if he can land some counter shots to keep the man off him. This is where they want to stand the work if you can, but the Pendleton do a pretty good job of making that difficult. by Span, but he was lunging. He wasn't really set down on those punches. The body work that Pearsall's been begging 
or stand and do. See, when he starts out to the body, he can land to the head, but when he only throws to the head, Pendleton will slip through a lot of those punches. Right hand by Span, landed up behind the ear. This is the tenor of the fight that uh, Pearsall and Span won. Oh, left hand by Pendleton. Span is generally doing a better job of slipping those counter punches now. Coming to the end of the fifth round, better round for Tracy Span. It continues to be a fight that really, for all intents, could go either way. We'll be back. Well, the conversation in the corner right here, Tommy Brooks was asking Freddie Pendleton, did he get thumbed in the eye? Freddie Pendleton says yes, and I couldn't, I can't see too well. Yeah, and here it is. There, well, the thumb landed clearly in the eye of Freddie Pendleton, no question about that. It wasn't so much the force of the punch. You'll see it here from even a better angle, yes. And you see right away, Freddie Pendleton wins it. And it is still bothering him a little bit, although it doesn't appear to, when he stands up, doesn't appear to bother him, but when he was in the corner, looked like he was having some troubles with it. Also, we don't know, as you said, his vision could be affected uh, in many ways. He said that he's having yeah, trouble he's seeing on it. In the fifth round, you can see Pendleton literally took the round off, and he took it off for a reason. Yeah, he was trying to survive after he was in the eye. You know, both men, in many ways, are don't look as quick and as sharp as you would like them to be. Not they have fought badly, but Stan is lunging a little bit, and Freddie Pendleton, not quite as quick a feet in hand as we're used to seeing from him. Part of that, of course, is the, the competition that they Now, Stan gets his man in there, and I know that's where Johnny Pearsall wants him to work, and he's really not doing anything. He's just laying in there. No, that, his timing is not great. Look at the lunging of Tracy Stan. On your card, it's a one-point fight. Very close. I'll give the fan the last two rounds to give him the first three to Pendleton. This is kind of meaningless body work by Stan. Randy Newman taking kind of a lazy fair attitude now, letting them be on the inside. And I don't know if, if he's not going to have to get in and break them a little bit more to make them fight because he's doing a lot of holding with them. Freddie Pendleton looking for that one shot, the lead right hand, or the counter right, and uh, not doing much else. And this is what they want to expand. Now he's working, throwing good right hooks. <laughs> the sharp punching we saw from Pendleton early is gone. Yeah. Randy Newman saying break, but he's going to have to get in there, I think. And uh, Randy's a very... And then, but they are being caught in large part of the gloves of Span. The first one where they got there. holding on the inside by both men than you might expect. You would expect a little bit more from Pendleton. Ali shuffled by Pendleton, but that's when he gets any points. No. Wisher Ali, that is. I think that shuffle might have won him three fights. Yeah, right. but he also used to throw about half the punches. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was a right hand by Pendleton. That was a good third shot. And this or that one. He's getting there with that punch from time to time, like that. Sharp punch, straight right hand. End of the sixth round, and Pendleton likely did enough to win that round. We'll be back. We talked about the counter right of Freddie Pendleton. There's one that landed and had an impact on Tracy Spann. So this is round seven, we're going 12. Heading toward that later point in the fight, which you figured is to Pendleton's event. Originally, I thought it was. We'll see if it could it, teach that way. There you see the punches in the sixth round. Pendleton doing better. His punches are a little sharper, than, I think, right now than Tracy Spence. But Spence with that power can always turn things around. Spence's missing and not missing close. I think 
Freddie Pendleton is starting to get a certain kind of confidence here, but one that is dangerous. This is after the, after the round last time, he looked down at us and he was kind of mugging a little bit, and you see him kind of his holding span looking out in space. That's the kind of confidence that could make you lose your concentration. I don't know if it will. See, look at his sticking his tongue out. I mean, he may be, he may be trying to sight Tracy's fan, but they're dangerous against fan because he can punch. And what it's making, Pendleton's kind of standing there in front of him, so if Span can, can land one of those big power shots. Combination by Pendleton. His hand speed is superior to Tracy Span. And he's providing an elusive target. He's a little preliminary if I was talking about, about, about a guy who throws his hand out there and leaves it out there. Well, no such animal for Freddie Pendleton. And, when he throws a punch, he's just not there for a counter punch. You can see Span trying to hold him to keep him in front of him. Keep Pendleton in front of him where he can punch him. You know, Randy Newman's a big man, a former heavyweight boxer. He may have to get more physical with these fighters, good right by Pendleton, to make sure that they don't hold all the time. Now, Pendleton is fighting Stan's fight right now, but getting away with it and doing pretty well. Pendleton's just punching sharp. Yes. And he's right there where Stan should be doing better work. The power of Pendleton is deceptive. Just ask Roger Mayweather, he'll tell you. He got whacked out by Pendleton, as have others, like Sammy Pointers and the like. Man trying to work inside again as we hit the end of the seventh round. And this is another effective round for Freddie Pendleton. And I can't help but wonder if there might have a little bit of frustration setting in on the part of Tracy Span. Another reminder, hoops on Wednesday. The number one ranked Duke Blue Devils. Will they be number one on Wednesday? They were a loser today to Georgia Tech. They play Wake Forest. That's Wednesday to get us underway. Then at 9 o'clock, we go back to the Big East where it'll be St. John's. The Johnnies with a win the other night against Villanova. That's Wednesday night. NCAA basketball, the Wednesday jam. You can see that I obviously still bothering Freddie Pendleton. You still pull it out with your hands down. You can't pull it out, baby. Okay? okay. Stand right. Drop, start dropping him in there. Follow up. I need you to follow up every time now, okay? Because yeah. he's standing right there. Okay? As soon as he spins, go pull to straight back. When you pull back, hands up, chin down, okay? okay. This is your show. This is your show. Deeper. Now you work too hard for this, baby, okay? Come yeah. on. Let's take this thing home. Set right okay? back on. After you accommodate, set right. Time to go. Huh? All right, here you We start the eighth round. This is a 12-round fight for the IBF Lightweight Championship of the World. You know what was great about that corner work? It was half. Uh, specific advice and half inspiration, and that's about what you want in a big fight like that. On your card, after seven rounds, a decided edge right now for Pendleton, and I, I don't know that the judges could argue with that. Well, I have a five to two for Pendleton, and then there might be some difference of opinion, but Freddie, I, I think I think you can feel it in Span's corner too, the way Pierce Hall's talking, that, that uh, they know their man might be behind you. Well, I alluded to the end of the last round, a little bit of frustration perhaps on the part of Tracy Spann. What's your feeling about that? I think that some, to some degree that's true. He's not quite sure how to get to Pendleton. He hurt him in the first round. Hasn't been able to hurt him too badly since then. Tracy's timing doesn't look quite what it should be and what it has been. He's just a little bit off here, so he's not landing well. And now Pendleton is almost able to do it once. You know, this fight, I have to say, Ron Katz, the matchmaker, was mentioning that in a, in a certain way, this looks a little bit like the hagler Leonard fight, in which Hagler, who's also South Pole, was off in his timing, and it really hurt him against Leonard. But I think he could make a case either way in that fight. I think he yeah. stole that right. fight. I don't think he could say Freddie Pendleton. No, that was a, a much closer fight. fight but yeah, absolutely, right. Pendleton, in this case, doing a much more definitive job than, let's say, Leonard was able to do against Hagler. It was very close. But, but the timing factor of Stan looks a little bit like uh, like Hagler. Of course, Marvin Hagler was a, was a great fighter. Tracy Span's a good fighter. So Hagler was able to work through there. his problem to some degree during that fight. 
And also, just to elaborate on that point, I think the game plan that Marvin Hagler went in with was wrong. I'm not sure the game plan that Tracy Spann went in with is wrong. It's just the execution. Yeah, precisely, yeah. He just can't quite get it done. Marvin wasted a few rounds fighting right-handed. Full takedown. Long sport. Let me tell you something. Randy Newman's giving a warning to Pendleton, and, and maybe rightfully so. Pendleton looks shocked, but I gotta tell you something. If I'm Freddie Pendleton, that's exactly the kind of stuff I want to do at this point in the fight to Tracy Spence, because guess what? I want to show him you're not the roughest, toughest customer in town. I am, pal. Except that Freddie Pendleton said, I didn't do that. Yeah, well, wouldn't you say that? <laughs> Psychologically now, Freddie Pepsler's in control. That could change at any time because Span has power. But those punches of Span don't have a lot on it. Pendleton hasn't exactly been a world winner this round either. Come to the end of the eighth round, really an uneventful round. And this was a question of who lost it, not who won it. Huge pep talk by Johnny Persall in the corner of Tracy Spann with good reason now. Yeah, because they, they think the Spann is behind in this bout. He is not working as hard as he needs to work. Our punch profile tells us that Spann's averaging around 58 points in the round. And uh, there you see, he's through 51 in the last one. Normally, he is up around 80 or 90. Pendleton's accuracy level so much better in the last round, even though he's true fewer. They need more punches on Spann, and they also need more power punches. Let go of his head, let go of his head. Let go of his head. Yeah. I gotta tell you something. I, Randy Newman really needs, I think, to get in there, and I'm not gonna be real critical of him. It's just that I really think that he would have his spot if he could get in there and break them more often. Not a holding board. And he usually is a, a yes. referee who does do that. Absolutely. That's why it's a little uncharacteristic in, 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 in a way. And in your card, it's going to be more and more lopsided for Pendleton. In fact, if it's going to be a decision and there are no knockdowns, fans got to win everything from here on. It look, it, well, it would look like it to me, and that was kind of what Johnny Pearsall said. He said, you got 9, 10, 11, 12 to get something done here. Pendleton better be careful that with all this movement, as you pointed out earlier, he's going to have to make sure he throws enough punches. There might be a little frustration setting in Tracy Spann, however. He's just not able to do what he wants to do. A little wilder than he was. His, his offense has been uh, not very good here in the last three or four rounds. Doesn't look like a guy that's going for a big knockout punch. Now like there, he used his head against uh, Pendleton. But he is not getting leverage, Spann is not his punches. Here's the first right hook he threw with conviction for a while. There's nothing going on for Stan in the side. Now, Pendleton's not doing much either, but Stan's the guy that's behind. What a huge right by Pendleton, but Stan doesn't do much. <laughs> he just keeps looking down here at us. He's looking at everywhere. Pendleton got in with a very short right hand, right to the chin, too. You can feel Pendleton looking for that right again. Just oh, there it was, right to the top of the head. Good one right there. Well, these are the later rounds, and Pendleton now is really starting to take clear control of this. Can he land the right? He can land that punch almost when he wants now. His mission is to do it without getting hit by something big by Span, and so far he's accomplishing it. I'll tell you, right at the end here, Pendleton might have stolen this round. And the round nine, and now Span opens Pendleton up and might have hurt him right at the end of the round. We'll be back. Tracy Spann, big moment for him, one of his best in the last few rounds, had good left hand. But Freddie Pendleton came back with shots right after that. And Freddie Pendleton saying to Johnny Purcell, I feel fine, I'm not tired, I got a lot left, and he starts this 10th round like he does. Well, if he does, this is the time for him to get it going. Both rounds. Yeah, the ninth round, though, Spann's throwing 14 more punches than he did in the eighth round. He didn't land a lot more, though. So the end, Pendleton landed some good shots. They only threw 15 jabs between them in round nine, so they have not a punch to use left. Freddie Pendleton has been in against the veritable who's who of these 
lightweight and sometimes junior welterweight division. Numerous ex champions like Razai Bramble, Fernand Whitaker, the women with the likes of Sammy Fuene, John Monty, who he lost to, Roger Mayweather. These are the list goes on, Frankie Rand, the list goes on and on. It's the quality of his opposition, even early in the was astonishing. Left hand by Pendleton just grazed the eyebrow of Tracy Span. Pendleton using his jab. It just seems to have Span off balance just enough. Yeah, and just enough is exactly the phrase. I'll tell you what, though. Freddie Pendleton is doing just little enough to not make sure he absolutely is going to win this fight. You know, we have him ahead. There's the jab of Pendleton. He's able to land that now, and it sets up the right hand. On the outside, Span's going to have a hard time winning here. He's in the wrong posture. Going backwards is definitely not Span's game. Now Pendleton on his bike here. It's kind of an uneventful 10th round here. Yeah. yeah so is the 8th, actually. Really yeah. Actually, it's the ninth. Kind of a short with that right hand. Pendleton's in his prevent defense mode, really, almost trying to just move up to, to maybe sneak by in the round and not get in trouble and get knocked out. That was a right hand, and that has been holding on. On well, the outside, Span will get hit with shots like that. Another one. One of them will push for it. A lot of lunging, and you see Pendleton looking for the right again. Those few shots could have been enough to tip the round for Pendleton. In which case it would be a perfectly executed round for him. Didn't use a lot of himself up. And there he lands with a good left hook. Well, he may well have taken this round with that last flurry. I'm going to listen to Johnny Perso, and I'm sure this is going to be a frenetic corner. Let's listen. You want this championship? You got to go out there and fight. You out there shadow boxing. You got to get down, Tracy, and fight. You want okay. to fight. You're out there stalling for time, kid. Come on. You want to be champion? You got to earn it, kid. You got to go out there and want it. This is where it's at night, kid. You got to get in the tank and work. You want to be champion? Do you want to be champion? Then you got to fight. You got two hands. You got to use them both. Use them both. You got two. Listen to him, Trace. You need these two. Close the distance. Do you Don't want stay it? Outside. Do you want it? Well, that's the stuff movies are made of. It, it really is. Back to the the, uh, the keys to victory for Span. He's not been able to sustain his effort. He has ignored the body more than they wanted to. Fenelon has countered well. Later has been better for him, hasn't it? So he's followed his keys better. Normally, you'd listen to a corner. Well, here, here. We take a look at Pendleton landing some of those counter right hands. There it is. Well, actually, a right hand that wasn't a counter right hand. Normally, you'd hear Johnny Pearsall in the corner like that. You'd say, come on, where's the technical advice? But guess what? He's done that with Tracy Stan. Tracy Stan knows what to do. Johnny Pearsall is doing the, the only thing he can do right now, which is motivate his man to get in there and just flat out go after him. There just comes a time that you stop being a tactician and start being a cheerleader. And here's what happened in the last round. A little response production way, way down. Yeah, and that's what Pierce was talking about. You got to get in and dig and work. You're a power puncher, Tracy Span. That's what he's essentially telling him. You've got to just throw cautions and win and get in there and make something happen. Well, Tracy Span is just going to have to start doing some business. On your card, he's going to have to knock him out. I've got Pendleton ahead by four points. And obviously, only two left. So knockdowns at least are essential. There's a right hook by Span. I think part of it is that Pendleton has made him respect his power, Barry. Yeah, there's a right hook by Span and a better counter right by Pendleton. Hey, you're tired. You're tired. Don't hit him anymore. Come on. Pendleton is just taking control of the fight. Tracy Spann has never been past the 10th round. This is the first time he has been there. And for Freddie Pendleton, he has been 12 rounds on, two, on three different occasions. So he's more used to this, uh, this 12 round limit than Tracy Spann. Although it isn't to say that Spann really looks particularly tired. He probably looks a little less fresh than Pendleton does, but still have to respect his power. 
I think Fenlon has just taken the tempo of the fight all his way. He really has. He's been a little bit smarter in the execution of his game plan. A little bit quicker with his hands. His fans' power, which we saw very much in the first round, has not been able to, to stay with him throughout this fight. He hasn't been setting down his punches as much as he would like. Nice little counter left hook by Pendleton. Pendleton said he learned in the first fight. He said, I went down, I was hurt for a moment. He said, but I, I learned the things I could do effectively against Fanny. It would look like they were lessons well learned. And oddly enough, he got hurt in the first round this time, yes. too. Good body shot came up with a combination. Now, Freddie Fenelon doesn't have the greatest uppercut in the world. It's a punch that works real well against Fan. There you saw him throw it. He just has Fan completely frustrated right now. And Fan's just falling around the ring and pawing with his punches. And Pendleton now talking to Fan, doing the alley shuffle the whole bit. And, you know, normally you might say, well, for a hot dog. You know what, Freddie? He's <laughs> earned the right to do that after the ups and downs he's had in his career. He might want to enjoy this moment a little bit, but he better be careful he doesn't enjoy it too much. So we come to the end of the 11th round, and Tracy Spann will have three minutes to do some business. You are in the corner of Tracy Spann, and once again, Johnny Pearsall left to only lead cheers. You gotta go now. One, you gotta sit down a little bit, because you can't wait, but you won't bend your knee. Take a deep breath. Hear me. Watch that, get it. And actually a little cheerleading in Freddie Pendleton's corner, too. Look at him before you go out. That was as animated as Tommy Brooks has been throughout the fight. It's interesting. Get up, let's go. Let's go. Now, what Johnny Pearsall did say to him, and this was of a technical entry, bend your knees and set down your punches. But, of course, Tracy Stan really knows that. Just a little extra reminder. Let it go. Let it go. In the 11th round, Stan threw oh, more man. punches, but just was missing badly while Pendleton more economical, but he landed a lot more. And those punches he landed were clear, sharp punches, Pendleton. And I think when they look back on this bout, the lack of body work by Stan is just going to really come back to harm. Pendleton has matched him strength-wise in the inside. He's just as strong as Stan. Let me ask you another thing, too. Stan, for the better part of the fight, like he is right now, is just squared up in front of Pendleton. Yeah. And it seems like if he gave more angles, he might be a little bit less of a target. You're absolutely right, Jerry. It's always, that's always been a problem for Tracy Spann, but, but usually he'll get to a guy and get him out. He didn't against Piaz, and that cost him the fight. And on your card, this is not a surprise. Spann, of course, would have to knock out Pendleton to win the fight. Now, we have to say, we have seen, once again, some strange numbers being put up on the part of the officials here. Yeah, tonight's not been one of their better nights, you have to say. And a reminder that coming up after we get away, which will be soon, Sports Center, a lot of sports news, of course. A couple of football games in the NFL, and the finalists have been decided in each conference now. I'll tell you all about that. Duke coming up on the short end for the first time. No major undefeateds that I can think of off the top of my head. And I think that score was put up incorrectly. It's 107-102. I have a five-point spread. They uh, ever think. Back to Maine, Spam would have to knock out Pendleton and win the fight. Yeah, and it's important to note because uh, if, if, if we see scores that indicate anything less than a three or four point spread for Freddie Pendleton, then that's not uh, even close to being correct. He has done what he has to do here. There's an example of it. Excellent. He has countered well. He has been sharp. Oh my, he hurt Stanley. He hurt him badly, and Stan is in big trouble. And he's got a long way to go. And it won't take much for Stan to go down. We'll only take one more punch, and there's that punch. Randy Newman looking closely here. Stan finally gets off the ropes. Still a long way to go. And you know what's interesting? Pendleton is not being reckless even now. You understand? Even a hurt Tracy Stan, you don't want to give him a chance to take your title games away. Because this has punctuated this win. Yeah, Span is still on really wobbly legs here for 15 seconds to go in a fight. But you know what? I'll tell you what, in the back of his mind, Freddie Tumble would love to say, I don't even want the judges to think about scoring this fight against him. Span is going to finish the fight on very wobbly legs. It's all over, and Freddie Pendleton really put an exclamation point on it. Excellent fight, excellent game plan. 
Excellent execution by Freddie Pendleton. Now we'll see if the judges agree. We'll be back. All right, let's get up to Michael Buffer and get the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Harris Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Gene Williams scores the belt, 117 to 111. Gary Merritt has it the same way, 117 to 111. And Rick Bay scores it, 116 to 112 for the winner, who is now the brand new IBM lightweight champion of the world, peerless, Freddie Pendleton. A well performed right. from Freddie Pendleton, and the judges' cards pretty much agreeing with our own here. Came in with a terrific plan, and not only came in with a great plan, but he executed the plan just as well as he drew it up. So Freddie Pendleton, a unanimous decision winner. Here's Al Bernstein. Freddie, congratulations. Thank you. A spectacular win for you. You were hurt in the first round, but you overcame it. Hurt? hurt what? Well, it looked like it hurt you in the first round. All right, never mind. You weren't hurt. A terrific, a terrific performance. What about the strategy employed tonight? You were moving on him constantly. Well, the guy's a tremendous puncher. He can punch. He's strong. He's cocky. He's, oh, my God. He cocky. Well, All right. you know, but I had to move and use my lateral movement. The offset is strength. All right. Well, we got to run, but congratulations. Oh, Thank you. Okay. All right. Freddie Pendleton, he gets the win. It was a big one. Let's go back to Barry. All right. Thanks very much, Al. Well, it's the old adage. Good things come to those who wait. Freddie Pendleton waited 53 fights. Tonight, he got the good thing. He's the champion of the world. For Al Bernstein, I'm Barry Tompkins. The next edition of Top Rank can be seen Monday, January 18th, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, here on TSN.